with session 15 of King Leo D&D. Um, some brief announcements before we get going. First of all, thank you for getting here. If you're on session 15, um, we, we've been doing a lot and you've endured a lot to, to sort through the story and us as people. Um, so welcome and thank you. <laughs> thank you to our one. No, that's not true. Uh, anyway, but also yes, thanks Kit, hold on one. Um, so, uh, some announcements to go over real quick. Uh, first one is fun and new content outside of just this campaign. Uh, a three video series at this point, but some additional videos will be coming. Uh, D&D 101 um, will be posting by the end of March. Uh, it's gonna be three videos um, where the topics are like, um, what are the dice and how they are used in D&D? What does role playing mean? And then what role does a backstory play uh, to having a good character? So if you've never played before and you're interested in some of that stuff to get started, uh, check out those videos, which will be coming out soon. Um, next, we do have some painted minis finally here at our table. Uh, we'll get a good image uh, set of those on the Twitter page, so go check that out if you're not there yet. And the last announcement too, um, I've been talking with, uh, I guess particularly Stephen and Cassandra about um, potential Patreon goal stuff and things that we're wanting to do next. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually start some merch, um, but uh, we're going to do some saving of money to make sure that we can that. It's a big undertaking, so if you're interested in March, we would greatly, greatly appreciate some support on the Patreon. Um, that's tied in there, some of our goals and stuff like that too. Um, but uh, we'd love to do some t-shirts and hats and sweatshirts too. Um, so that might be drumming up sometime soon. Uh, so get excited for that. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. As we were done with announcements, the recap is very brief of what episode 14 was. Um, yes, it started with an investigation check with um, Thule, who was checking out the space, the door, and Merkeldar, um, who quickly discerned the powerful, powerful magic that Merkeldar is capable of just by looking at him, that she got this, um, just this uh, essence of his uh, grandiose power. Um, and then that was kind of lost in translation, <laughs> and then eventually picked back up. Um, and when she told this to Misery, Misery did not care, and he still persisted with his charming magic song um, written to uh, negotiate a contract, riveting lyrics uh, by Misery there, um, which succeeded on a couple members of the party, um, and then unsure overall the effects on Rickledar. But uh, the contract was negotiated back and forth, some numbers were changed around. Um, the repairs and rebuilding of a house on Cicero's family's property um, is now agreed to be complete within two weeks' time, uh, as well as some shop um, uh, agreements and some loyalty and discounts that Rickledar will get on your behalf. Uh, and he also told you all about a potential job. Uh, a magical door lost somewhere out in the woods that some shipwrecked sailors have located um, and have found and lost multiple times and nobody's been able to refind it again. Um, in part of this conversation, translating now into actual play, Rickledar hands forward a hand-drawn map of his own, um, kind of isolating where this door could be found um, around the shores of Lake Georgina. And so... With that, uh, he kind of points you all off into it's the yellow circle. Mm. <laughs> like, is there a we key? Like compass rose? Um, yeah, or a key? I, I thought well, about We can a key. see where the dock is. <clears throat> yes, there's the dock, there's a lighthouse. Parking? Uh, that's where the populace is. Yeah, I thought about doing a key, but then I was like, y'all are going to make fun of me for doing a key, so then I didn't. Right? Is this, this is the dock? No. That's a bridge. That is the oh. bridge. Um, that's actually uh, on the north side. Of populous. Cicero and I crossed that once. Yes. Um, so, so we're actually like over here. Right. You're within that circle where the P is. Um, that okay. square that you're pointing at there is Cicero's cabin, um, and then there are all those trees around the edge of the lake. You're so close to the lake. I can't confirm. Yes. Why oh, didn't you tell us sooner? Huge lake. It is a massive lake. It's massive. This is a super one massive point, black hole lake. At one point, Pogram asked about like, you going before. through the middle of it, and it is it's rather large. Mm. Mm. No. Large and <laughs> large. Yes, can't so confirm. The, the can't Pilgrim confirm. is now pointing at the map in the in game. Wait, really? Yeah. He said he, he said he transitioned to real place. He rippled or put the map in front of us. So mm. we must be mm -hmm. about the map. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Misery. Mm -hmm. Misery. 
So there we go. <laughs> you you these shipwrecked sailors believe that the door is somewhere in this region. <clears throat> yes. Interesting. Shit, not that. <laughs> yeah, it's the circle part. I'm studying the map. Pilgrim is studying the map and memorizing it. Right. So how far? Uh, yeah, pause for a little. Yes. Um, how far of like a trek is that? You didn't put like the. Yeah, like what's a kilometer? <laughs> right, yes. Um, fantasy is it kilometer. fantasy kilometer? Oh, yeah, fantasy I will say, my cabin is almost the same size as the city of Boston. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow! Is this just scale? I feel mean, like you're really insulting cool. my artistic. No! We're no. insulting Riggle's art. Your cabin was the size of Boston before you destroyed <laughs> it. I was gonna need more gold. And then when it gets rebuilt, it will be the size of Poppins. Yeah. You could mm-hmm. probably get to the general area where this door could be found um, in uh, six six hours, four to six hours of walking time, um, and then however long it would take you to actually find it. Does that count as a short rest? No, you'd have to not be doing anything to patch yourself up. <laughs> Says Dan to Tim. <laughs> um, also, while we're doing a brief aside, actually, do you mind scooting a little bit down that way to give Sally some room? The, Positioning of this light. Do I not have room? Oh. Um, major, I can't move this camera further this way. Like, scoot the bench. Yeah, so just give her some more room to be in, in frame. Um, this is great. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Stand up. Sorry, Pops. I didn't need that much room. <gasps> Wait, did you do that? It sounded like it broke a little bit. We did it. And back to fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, cut that out. Riddle no. Those were all. Don't go. Can you not mess up my man Big Rick's name? Big Rick. Riddle no. How did these sailors describe this door? Uh, they said that it was cut into a, a ravine of some sort. That there was a large pile of the, the dirt and cliff side, but then when they walked down into that for, for rest that night after their ship was destroyed, that they did end up finding it on this right side where this long stone panel was that one of the one of the sections of the stone lit up and they recognized that there was some runes of some sort that they could read. And so it would look like Kind of a long cut into stone in the middle of the woods. Thank you. Are they like doing anything like out of the ordinary when they came near the store? Something that could have, you know, like triggered it? Um, no, from what I remember, uh, when their ship was. Uh, destroyed and heading down into the lake and they swam to the shore, they quickly, in the middle of the night, went to go find some place to secure for the evening, and then, in their time in camp, they stumbled upon this section of the stone. Almost like a door of requirement. <laughs> no. Okay. It, it did not open, and also what? I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fantasy door. Hmm, fantasy door of requirement. Um, can Tuli think about any kind of, um, uh, Tuli is thinking about, is there any kind of floor or any kind of spells or anything that uh, she knows about how to get magic doors to pop up? Checking her history, so yes. how, to get them, how to get them up to the door. Your door. How, what Checking kind of magical lore do I know? Mm-hmm. I'm leaning towards, I want to do our kind of right. whatever you think. What yeah. kind of lore do I know about how to, mm-hmm. what this could be or yeah. how to get it to appear? Yeah, we'll be go ahead and roll on our contract. Great. Um, there are lots of different schools of magic, and so lots of different ways that um, doors can be created or affected. There are lots of different doors. <laughs> I've seen lots of I know. So uh, some magicians can um, create like a portal that appears to be a door, but then takes you somewhere else. Uh, some magicians make. Uh, can make a uh, door appear to be like stone, though it's always been a door. Um, other magicians can make a door appear that would take you 
when other times the door is not there at all. Um, and so with that, there's so many different ways that this could go um, that you know that it's very much within the realm of magic, but you don't have nearly enough information to narrow down which one of these ways this door could be. Uh, and also, some doors are just locked magically. Um, so within all of those, it could be created, it could not be there, then reappear there, or mm. tons of different things like that. I guess I need like more information. Well, let's go. <laughs> I to see it. To the <laughs> we should go. Well, hold on. We have many other things to do today. Oh. Don't you remember? Don't. Misery has band rehearsal. Yeah. Right? And then also we have to go back to the store. We have to go back to the store with the rock for the guy to look at it. We have a meeting. We have a meeting. So I think... Also, we have a cabin to build. You have a cabin. Okay. The contractors are doing that. Yeah. They said it would help. Oh. Well, they, they said they didn't want us. We have a full day already. <laughs> I will, what I will Still, let you know if they need your help. <laughs> I can say perhaps this is the beginning of us completing any quest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please. Is that like first thing in the morning, essentially? Sure. What time is it? Agreed. It's now right after lunch. You all left to get lunch, lunch, came back to sign the contract. <laughs> so you probably do everything else and then, yeah. Some this of us have some injuries that- It's a six hour journey. Anyway. That could do yeah. with some rest before. Yeah, maybe a long lunch. rest. That troll we saw went into some woods. God, God. Get that oh, yeah. Was that thing running the direction that we're- I don't know because there's not a compass from. <laughs> Honestly, I hope not. It whooped our butts. Why do we care about this troll anymore? It's but, gone. Who are you? I don't are think you? it is. Don't repeat it. No, that's not Pilgrim. Okay. That's well, Stephen. Rachel will say, I don't want to be near it. Good. Thank you. I think we're concerned that it ran in the direction of yes. this. Yes. Okay. Uh, Gwen, make a major check while looking at this map and remembering the direction that you chased the troll. Yeah. I mean, there. his house is on it, so it's gotta be probably the same direction. 19. Yeah. It ran the same direction. No! Yeah. It's his house and then all yeah. the woods. I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think good. I'm going to do the, oh, the rock thing. You know, Cicero, you'll be fine. Okay. You have us. Hmm. We're all here. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> you have me, mostly. Well, it's it's mostly. Get for the beer. <laughs> we have our work cut out for us. Brickledor, thank you for this quest and for this map. I show you that this is the start of a wonderful partnership, sponsorship. Um, I would say that we should see how many um, loose ends we can tie uh, before nightfall so that we can be ready and rested tomorrow to investigate this door and apparently avenge Cicero's house. <laughs> Amazing. Very excited. Thank you all for... Uh, negotiating and, and coming to an agreement over these terms and I will quickly get to work with some people to rebuild and then once I get those in line I will come back to you all uh, and get some plans going get your uh, family insights on the way that this building should be rebuilt and then I will let you know who I could hook into our contract for a blacksmith and a magic shop wonderful we know a magic shop Oh, do we not want to commit to it yet? Which magic shop do you know? The Bronze Star. That's on my fault, Dan. It was the Brass Star. The Brass Star. Interesting. Okay. Uh, is that one that you would like me to focus on? Potentially. Is that the only one you've been to? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't even been there. If, if I could get a bigger discount at a different shop, would you prefer a bigger discount or this particular yes. relationship? <laughs> oh. Well, we're about to meet with Farragrand in, in Orth at the nighttime. Uh -huh. And then we can maybe talk to him about how much we want. And maybe they can meet in the middle and have a sick deal for us. Ooh. Mm. Uh, well, if your meeting with him goes well, um, let him know I'm interested in a meeting and you can send him my way uh, anytime tomorrow or the day after. And Cheers. we'll get started. See? 
Wonderful. Yeah, I said all that in Pilgrim's voice, not mine. Amazing. <laughs> that sounded so good, too. Cool. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Um, sorry. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, does it make sense for the people that need to go back to the shop to go to the shop while Misery is at rehearsal? Yes. That does make sense. Mm-hmm. But we're not meeting until the evening. Right. So that's the same time as his rehearsal, right? Oh, sorry. Oh, what was the other thing you said? Mm-hmm. Meet the fairground and the So, what's this about a meeting? You know about it. Oh. <laughs> it was like you were there. We are going to meet with Fairground, the owner of the bra- Brass Star, and uh, see if we can get to the bottom of. And I'm just kind of tapping my breast pocket where the stone's being kept. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys don't um, want me or me. <laughs> Do you want me to come to you? That would be wonderful. Okay. Frankly, I hope to be able to trust Fairgrand, but the reality is, is we don't know who to trust in this town, frankly. That's so, uh, I think all the help we can get. Okay. I've got a little bit of studying to do, but then I'd love to go with you guys. Mm-hmm. Cicero, would you like to join us? To be honest, I would not. Let me propose this to you, Cicero. If you will not join us at the magic shop, might you join me at the archives to help me check out a book? Oh, I do like the archives. Wonderful. That's not the words. Before our meeting, I would love to go return to the archives with my uh, friend and uh, resident of the city, as I clearly understand how archives work. I need to be a resident here, and so I will go with my resident and get it. That might not even exist! My sponsor. Do we feel that my skills are needed at this evening meeting? Otherwise, I was thinking of maybe going with Misery if you didn't mind to start on some marketing material. You want to come listen to us private? Oh. Yeah, to like listen, yeah. more your vibe, and then maybe work on some like marketing materials. Place your beast, you know? Yeah! I don't really remember. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be like. sick! <laughs> That's cool with you? Yeah. Okay. Does that work? That works. Really they so don't need it. Okay. The first quest of... I forgot our name. <laughs> the half, the half dozens. dozens. The half dozens. Which one is it? I'm going to petition to do the half dozens. Okay, that's good. Wait, really? Uh, yeah. The first quest of the half dozens. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hooray. Like we think I almost said Tyler Aren't we just... <laughs> So, um, the first thing we can jump to, it will be Tuli. Uh, Tuli, where do you head to do your studies? Mm. Uh, we still have the Elisa Regional. You do? For one more night? Uh, I think two more nights. Two more okay, nights. two more yeah. I'm gonna head back to our room at the Elisa Regional Great. to get drunk. study. <laughs> <laughs> to get high on my That's right. <laughs> and and my study, <laughs> students. To study the Book of Evocation that I checked out. Okay, as you head in, uh, evening breeze leads back to your the establishment. Um, so it perks up and seeing you walk in um, in this now after lunch rush uh, time. It's a little uh, not like not populated, not super busy. A lot of empty tables in the common space, uh, and uh, she behind the desk just perks up. Oh, hello. Uh, it's uh, Tuli. Yes. Uh, how are you, Tuli? I'm so good. Tuli immediately like does a hard 90 degree turn to where she is and goes straight <laughs> over to her. Oh, yes. Um, well, welcome back. I uh, noticed that you all have been out and, and busy, and you mentioned this ecological study. How has it been? What have you learned? Well, where do I even begin? <laughs> 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 well, uh, we learned, uh, have you heard anything about these crazy crabs that are just kind of coming in and out of the lake? Go, the we go saw a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, <laughs> yes, and you are fighting them, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were supposed to catch one live, but we didn't. Mm. Um, it's kind of a long story, but, um, well, anyway, uh, we're all alive, and our boat is intact. Great. Actually, it's Zach's boat. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's, a, he's a dwarf. Okay. okay, well, anyway. 
He has another name, but he prefers to go by Zach. Good. Um, but anyway. Amazing. Yeah. So all in all, it went well. I would say, uh, you know, seven out of ten. We'll study again. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, glad to hear it. Well, uh, uh, feel free. Yeah, enjoy your room. Um, has everything been uh, as you've needed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys wouldn't happen to have any feather here, would you? Um, no, but um, I can have someone get you some if you'd like. Um, well, I don't want anyone to go to any trouble. Oh, it's, it's not that far at all. Where would they be going? Um, uh, it would be to Smash Pots, which we've been used with. Evening Breeze, you're not going to believe this. I actually work there. No way. Yeah. Cool. Have you, do you like to go there? Uh, yes. Uh, not often, but uh, I, I stop by on occasion. Well, uh, you should come by sometime next time that I'm working, and I can get you a discount. My boss loves letting me have things for free. <laughs> he yeah. never complains about it. Kel? Yeah, Kel? exactly. Wow. Yeah. Never would have guessed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I will get I'll get some sense. Um, to your room, what's that? Yeah, that would be great. For sure. Um, and this whole time, Tumi has been, has not let mm-hmm. go of the death grip yes. of the book that she's had right here. Mm-hmm. And she kind of taps her fingers and she's like, just got some studying to do. Oh, uh, well, uh, good luck. On your test. Tumi <laughs> <laughs> okay. says, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, so yes, you can head to the room and uh, proceed to study. Uh, uh, not even an hour goes by before there's a little knock on your door, and um, just a human male uh, in very boring, very boring place. <laughs> Lame. Uh, just man. just, just, just a human. Um, like you, know, you call out, like the door opens a little bit, and you just see like wrists slide at a pot of feather and a cup. <laughs> just wrists. Just human, <laughs> human wrists. <laughs> 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 Completely detached from the body. Duly, Duly jumps up from where she's studying, and you hear probably maybe from the hall. You hear her go stop, 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 stop. Yeah. <laughs> she goes to the door. Does she catch him? Oh, for sure. Like short blonde hair, just kind of thrown off to the side. He's just like, ah, ah, no. <laughs> so sorry. She the door. <laughs> but while he's shutting it, yeah. thank you so much. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, what spells are you taking from this book, and about how long is it going to take? Okay, um, I have um, um, <laughs> I have a question. Can I yeah. ask you a question? So about yeah. the Agonazar Scorcher. Yeah. Um, it says a red dragon scale. Yes. It doesn't have a cost Correct. with it, so, so I don't. Spellcasting focus comes. In. Okay. Um, I think that I, um, just for y'all to know, I'm very indecisive about what I should do, but I think I am going to go with Agonazar's Scorcher, um, and then also I think I'm gonna learn Chromatic Orb. Okay, so first level spell, the second level spell, uh, and is that all of your pages too? That is all of my pages. Okay, and is that three hours? It is six hours total. Six hours total, so you're just getting started and then probably interrupted to go to your meeting. So were we meeting around lunchtime or is it like mid-afternoon or? So right now is um, maybe like an hour after lunch okay. and the okay. meeting with um, Farragrand is gonna be like right after business is closed. Okay. Um, so it'll be, you, you were like just able to get it done. You'd be okay. able to fit it in, yeah. Okay. Then that is what I learned. Okay. You may say what there is. Six not just an no, 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 you're fine. Um, but yeah, the next six, six hours for Thule is spent <laughs> looking over the book that Munkin paid for um, and using the pages that Munkin provided and also some pages that you already have in your spell book and using the, the magical ink too and intensely um, looking at every little detail of these magical runes and writings and images and things that detail out how to mix the arcana of the world and also the elements of fire and then also a mixture of lots of different elements um, into these two different spells that you now copy into your spell book, uh, can memorize and use on a daily basis. I wanted to ask in the spirit of the School of the Open Mind, yes. um, would it be possible to say that I read through the other spells mm-hmm. 
And if someone uses them in combat, I would recognize them. Oh, for them. sure. Okay. You can go. Um, yes. Uh, and the feta was very helpful in oh, this, yeah. too. Um, <laughs> do I have an advantage? <laughs> uh, you don't have to roll for that, so this is oh, something okay. you need to get to do. Um, actually, so you do have since you threw this out there, we're gonna make our counter check for it. Oh! Oh no! That's I wasted scary. my good karma. Uh huh. It was a fortuna. Um, <laughs> this, this actually is zero risk to it. You don't have anything to lose, but you could actually. Everything. Do something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1d20 roll, and if you get above an 11. No! You roll a 10. Yes! Total Aww. with your arcana bonus? Yes. That's a shame. It's alright. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um. Oh, that's right. Pages. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Um, what so. Mean DM. <laughs> no. I was like, don't you the rules for her? <laughs> I, was, I thought you said cool. 10, not 11. You're on the no side of the game, Dan, not on our side. Yeah. yeah. DM versus the point of this. You didn't lose anything, you lose your two spells. Okay. Um, and, you felt, and you also felt like the time looking over the other spells was productive and helpful for you to recognize them. Yes. Um, Okay, that time is done. Um, let's do the archive. With, <laughs> let's do the archive with this row and pilgrim. Pilgrim times two. Double pilgrim. Oh pilgrim. no. <laughs> um, we have to be recognized by. Let's just do little pilgrims in different high schools. Pilgrim, you know that that would be an issue to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Cicero, you can imitate me as long as you wish until we reach the entrance to this archive, and then I beg. <laughs> <laughs> To just be yourself for five minutes. <laughs> what are we doing here? I am interested in learning more about uh, my own history, you could say. Ooh. So I would love to see if the archives were very impressive. Let me ask you this. Have you been to the archives before? I cannot say that I'm a, a reading man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I see. I know I go across as very learned, but... Oh, certainly. I can't say that I study much. Well, I know everything I need to know from the archives because of my father. Interesting. <laughs> you got British officers. I'm on the ride that is your voice. <laughs> um, wonderful. Well, yes, uh, it seems as if this archive contains many volumes on many subjects. So I, I'm curious as um, my people, the Kalashtar, are a uh, secretive and well, uh, I would say hidden, spread out group of, of individuals. I'm, I'm simply curious what sort of information these archives may hold. And that is when I found out that you cannot rent anything or, or check out any books unless you are a citizen of this town, which I'm not. Oh. For I am but a, and I can hold my hands up, pilgrim in this way. <laughs> Hence why you need me to come along and assist you. Correct. And I enjoy your company. Hmm. <laughs> I am choosing to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And now we walk in dead silence until we get there. Uh, you enter the archive, which you've seen a time or two. Do I know the name of the guy that's working? Um, it's a woman. It's a woman. Sorry. And no, we don't know her name. The human person. No She's not a human. Um, Luna. Yes. Um, which you wouldn't recognize. You would have just heard from their conversation about it before. Um, this isn't someone you've met before, but... Um, in um, very dark white robes, very clean and pristine, with long blonde hair pulled into a ponytail, um, looking over the books that she has down at the desk, sees you both come in, eyes linger on Pilgrim for a moment. I've changed back with this Pilgrim, was very serious. I yes. have changed back. Welcome back, Pilgrim. Hello again, Luna. I have brought a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> a motion to sister. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Luna. Hey, it's me. Hello, uh, Cicero, you said. Um, yes, uh, yes. Cicero, this is Luna. Luna, this is Cicero. Luna was uh, very helpful uh, earlier in instructing me how I might find out if they may have anything here. The Carissa clan of the country. Is this the one you flirted with? Yes. I know. No, more no, no, no. That was the old lady at the grass <laughs> <restaurant. laughs> <laughs> no, That was a fascinating way to interpret those events. <laughs> 90%. We are now here in this moment. <laughs> now, no, no, it's <laughs> All right. Um, Cicero, uh, please, if you could state your address so I could check our records. Where do you live? Yes. 416 Trailblazer Way. Whoever <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. lives at 416 Trailblazer Way just got a little nervous listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I guess technically I did live there until not technically I Oof. destroyed my cabin, but that is the address. So your home no longer exists. It exists? <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> the, so the kitchen and one of the bedrooms, but we're rebuilding it as we speak, and I have my citizen's card right here. Okay, no, but <laughs> I'm kidding, Citizens and you're hard. Oh, gosh, um, I was getting so nervous. <laughs> yes, we do have to rebuild those. It's just a book. <laughs> it's a um, book that might not even exist. Cicero is a row of 416 trail buzzer way. I've located your That's information okay. right here. Um, <laughs> wild. You may recognize the last name for his his lineage has, has protected and cared for the people of populous for generations. That's very true. You might have my father on record as well. Cicero? Y yes, yeah, we have him too. Okay. Um, and his grandfather. Is Isaro. <laughs> Isaro? As well as his great grandfather. Yes. I have it right here. You can say it. Cicero. Cicero, <laughs> Cicero, correct. And who could forget Cicero's great great grandfather? <laughs> Cicero. You have successfully identified five generations of your family. <laughs> Allow me to now say, um, would you like to borrow a person? <laughs> yes. oh, the curse is lifted. <laughs> <laughs> um, what well, is your business doing? 23 and me. I would check out a book. Uh, what, <laughs> <laughs> what, what topic, what, what sort are you looking for? Of the... Carissa. The Carissa. Uh, we do not have any books specifically on that topic. Um, however, the most relevant one I can think of now uh, is one that is just a collection of stories and tales and documents of different travelers we've had come by through the town and accounts of different uh, tales and things that they've said. Um, if you are looking for information, you may need to look over that for some time and see if this information is there, but this is the best I could do. They have a National Geographic, if you want. <laughs> I just kind of... Fantasy National Nod, kind of was interested in Cicero. Like, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. That would be nice. I would read that. Um, how long are you looking to borrow this book for? I mean, like... How long is one able to yeah. keep a book? Uh, five silver per day. Jeez. Hold, please. This one is... Oh. <laughs> Tears up <all> I, <laughs> Well, this piece of paper do instead. Uh, I have 19 silver. So... I'll keep it for two days. Two days? I'll give her... I'll give her Cicero 10 silver to keep the money. Yeah, also, if you need more to keep it longer, you can just ask Tuli. <laughs> Thank you, Cicero. I'm gonna hand him the 10 silver. Uh, great. Okay, and then... Uh, she sets down a, a pretty hefty book um, that this has maybe 150 or 200 pages, but the book itself is rather large too. And so she has to set up and sets it. I um, hand another five silver to Cicero. I want it for three days. <laughs> I think three days would be sufficient for me, a citizen of this land, to re read this book. Okay. Uh, so I read Harry Potter in a day, but. Yeah, I've read that four times. <laughs> How many silver is it gold? Ten. Oh, yeah, so that was like 1.5 gold. Um, I have a gold, I just don't know what the... Yeah. It was 12.8. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Uh, in three days' time, I have a notice mm -hmm. that this book is to be returned by Cicero. Cicero, right, Cicero. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Luna. We will be going now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the book that she hands over is called Tales of Travelers and Their Gods. Um, and there's a five page section that you care about. <laughs> you <read it> three <laughs> days. <laughs> but you gotta uh, find it first. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. Pouring over this book. Yeah. Uh, In between I, our many travels. Stephen, I do want to say I absolutely love the large books you have to sit down and you're like, five more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, so um, I will, depending on when you get to read it and how you roll on reading it, I will send you whatever information that you want. Love that. Great. Um, now that you have this massive book in tow, where are you heading? Um, we are essentially killing time until our meeting. Yeah. Yep. So I noticed you had some silver there. Perhaps maybe you'd want to make more silver with your current silver? Cicero, what do you intend to do with this silver? 
what do we intend to do? So, continue. Have you ever played the tables? The tables? Played the ponies? The ponies? Made some exciting moves on the slots? Like fish games. <laughs> fish game. Uh, I am intrigued. What are you proposing? How would you like to turn your, how much silver do you have left? Four. I have four silver. How would you like to turn your four silver into more silver? <laughs> <laughs> Two, four, eight. <laughs> this, this pauses real time in the game. <laughs> sure. All right. Hey, let's go. Okay. In the afternoon, looking for some type of midday gambling. Yes. When they do it, it. fish uh, games. Uh, just roll a d twenty for me. Two and, uh, if you roll a thirteen or higher, um, you know of a place that. As gambling at this time. Mm -hmm. With my gambling addiction, I have to. But if you don't know, I'm. What do I add to it? Look. Nothing. Just straight out of comp. D20 roll. Yeah. 18. Great. Okay. <laughs> I know of some places. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, with that, um, you know, the place at a corner of the cozy cots that mm -hmm. some people uh, gather around to uh, some coin. Tell me, I know a place to gamble. It's at the cozy cots. How do you feel about that? I have been staying at the Cozy Cots. All right. I had a fascinating relationship with its owner. <laughs> that sounds good enough for me. Wonderful. Um, you know a guy there who goes by Flint, um, who runs a very simple, like, other people against him, uh, kind of like the, the cup and ball thing, and mixing them around mm -hmm. and trying to um, have the person identify which one of the, the ball is in under the cup. Mm -hmm. um, and you've, you've made some coin here before. Um, and know that it's one that he typically hangs around during the day to do that. So, if you'd like to head there and gamble, um, we'll do this quickly and just do a d20 roll. Um, and well, you're starting with four silver. What are you intending to do or get to? What is your goal? Your money, your call. Oh gosh, um, Cicero, I this is already new to me. Um, I. Would be very interested to see what you can do with this, and I'm going to give him two of the four silver. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, with two silver in your hand, Cesar, how much are you trying to get to or risk for a play? This is the ball game in the cups. Yeah. <clears throat> for two silver, I would assume it'd be one silver a hand, right? Oh, we're just going to do two different like uh, contested. I'd like to turn it, turn four silver into two silver. Two, two silver gold. into two gold. Okay. Jeez. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's, a That's quite a lot. Um, I'm a gambler, man. For sure. Um, so exactly we'll, we'll do a small set first. We'll see if you can do two silver or two eight gold. Okay. Um, so um, you'll roll your d20 and what you're going to have to do. Is there any way that I can bring magic out of this? What type of magic? Prestidigitation. Prestidigitation. <laughs> say it for me. I need to hear you say <laughs> prestidigitation. Prestidigitation. Like digits. <laughs> okay. Um, so are you attempting to cheat? Yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> that is um, we all have our vices, okay? Yeah. Uh, first thing we need to do is make a sleight of hand roll. Great. Mm. Yeah, but he doesn't know how to game. Can I, use, can I use the guy? Okay. I rolled five. Oh, dude, no one told me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make us some money. Mm -hmm. So, here's the situation. <laughs> Tim has decided that Cicero is going to cheat at gambling and has clearly rolled something that is not going to end well. <laughs> oh, if he gets caught, then he'll get in trouble. So, Tim. I don't, I don't get in trouble. I don't break out. <laughs> Tim is requesting to use Jeffrey's blessing uh, on his bluff roll here on his side of hand. Party. Can you remind me what, uh, so whatever he rolls, we add to his He will get to roll that die and add five to it to replace the five that he just rolled in the yes. chance to cheat at gambling. And we use this once per session? Or per yes. Yes. two per sessions. So it would be for episode 15 and 16. This would be the, the roll. No, I will I also say, I got myself you all have this. not used Jeffrey in episode yeah. 14, 13, 12, or 11. I just haven't used it much. However, we are about to try to go find a door that we might find, well, that we might find a troll <laughs> near. An acid troll? I'm sure if we wanted to drag it out, we could. <laughs> <laughs> the most metagame we've ever We're still 
three sessions away. <laughs> I'm total faith in our ability to, yeah. to do that. Can we write that contract somewhere? No matter what our future endeavors are, I probably wouldn't vote for this anyway. No, 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 no. He, he's digging the hole. I'm still off the right. But right. if he gets thrown in jail, Joffrey is for and no derails our. Joffrey is interest. for no one. If he gets that distinguished we'll, gentleman, we'll have some flair. We'll, we'll okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. The Isaro tribe doesn't stay in jail long. He's a distinguished <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> well, would the Cozy Cats throw him in jail, though? Okay. Or would they? I don't know. Well, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, agree with the choice to use Jeffrey in this role, uh, when I count down, you can put your hand up. Three, two, one. Okay, <laughs> Tim, so sorry. Sorry. Um, but I will offer two. You see him attempting to use magic to try to cheat and swindle his way into some process with this. Would the less money. Double down on that and try to help him? What would we just don't want to enable your uh, I'm just. I'm just gonna mind link with Cicero and say, I'm sure you want to do this. It was too late for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm already done. <laughs> okay. uh, well, no, I'm not gonna. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Got it. <laughs> Gotta learn from your consequences. <laughs> We've been here before. <laughs> um, so, uh, Flint, this. I've never even described at this point. I'm assuming Flint and I have some amount of established relationship. For sure. It's positive or not, I'm right. assuming he It's neutral. It's neutral. It is very, very neutral. Uh, Flint is a pretty muscular, uh, short, black, curly haired uh, human um, sitting with his um, kind of leather vest and leather pants. Uh, obvious hilt of a dagger sticking out by his hip. Uh, and when he goes to uh, lift the cup that you have indicated, uh, a little ball clearly rolls underneath of it um, from you trying to use some magic and shape it to where the one that you picked actually is the correct answer. And he just stops and looks at it for a second. I don't like how that went down. We're gonna run it again. And then he shifts it around. And then has you pick which one, and you pick incorrectly, and so you lose one silver out of that. And he's looking down at you like... Still playing? Okay. Oh my gosh. Another d20 roll for this one. Now one silver to again, see if you can build up your gold over some time. Do you intend to cheat on this one too? And before he does that, I'm very reminded yeah. to say, uh, I'm sure you don't know how to not cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I've never won and not cheated. There's always time for the first. All right. Sure, we won't cheat. Okay. <gasps> Persuaded by my, my good friend, Pilgrim. Okay. Aww. Your conscience. Roll a d20. You need to beat a 13. Um, to get a gold. A mat one. <gasps> Should not gamble. <laughs> and so Flint leans down, flips over two stones, um, and shows that the one you picked did not have anything in it. Uh, takes the, the silver that you had put forward and says, Well, you have any more? No. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun, Cicero. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Flint. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing this. <laughs> and then he backs up his legs and leaves. <laughs> I don't know what else to do this afternoon. That was my fun. While we're in here, just yeah. looking around the room casually, do I notice the Agrius anywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's up finally coming. Cool. I just give him a little mm -hmm. Sick. Very slow, just intentional, mm -hmm. no way smile. I'm gonna message you. Do you know him? I see Agrius. He owns this place. He is uh, friends with an um, um, uh, individual named Trakasha. Oh, Trakasha! Oh, what if it was your phone? Oh! You know Trakasha? No, I just like the name. You, you, you do know. You do know. Yes! You <laughs> see, you, you bought your gems from when you did your phone. I bought my gems. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you know, you know. We've done some business trainings. Interesting. Yeah. Have you known him a long time? Uh, here or there. He's a friend of my father's. You see, you see. That's wonderful. Well, he is, he, I've not known him long, but he has been a, a, a great help to me thus far. Mm -hmm. Seems like a wonderful lizard folk. Mm -hmm. Great. Nice. Now we leave. Cool. That's the end of that. Yes. Uh, we will then hop to, let's go ahead and do band practice and um, let you all hang out for a bit. Um, so uh, we can do this kind of quickly. quickly. 
Um, Misery, you head over to uh, Yvonne's place, um, a uh, modest but still decent place that Yvonne owns by himself that he's used um, his own money to purchase. Um, Gwen, when you go into it, you see that it is rather uh, unkempt, uh, exactly what you would expect. Um, some guys of this age who own a band who kind of use this house for practice and other things um, to be. Uh, so it's not the best state, but um, none of them seem to care, notice, or mind at all. Um, and as they kind of rummage through the first kind of common room where you see strewn about empty bottles um, that have just been left around, um, a couple different blankets that have been turned into like cots and areas where some of the other ones of the band seat. Um, and you can see that just like standard of living is low. Uh, however, security and a place to live is, is here. Um, and Missouri, you head down to the basement of this place that you're very familiar with, leaving Gwen uh, with that. And you can hear talking and instruments being played downstairs. Um, where, just to recap, uh, Yvonne, uh, the elven male uh, with blonde hair, spindly frame, um, and very bright blue eyes is um, kind of working through some some songs, some familiar lyrics that you heard from Battle of the Bands. Um, Mystique, the bassist, Tabaxi, who has a bunch of earrings going up one ear, a nose ring, eyebrow ring, um, wearing a leather vest and um, a long leather trench coat over top of that. And then the bald drummer named Kenny. Um, all of them kind of hang out, starting some practice and then welcoming you in. Um, they, in brief, you have a show at Smash Pods, uh, so practice tonight, not tomorrow, but the show's the day after that. Um, and so this rehearsal is kind of to prepare for that, now that you'll have secured a weekly performance. Um, and also, Misery, they hand you seven gold um, as part of the Battle of the Bands winnings. Uh, this was your cut from that, now that they've gotten paid. Um, and also, um, just in general, from past performances and the growing um, success of the band. Don't tell Cicero. <laughs> Don't tell Cicero. <laughs> so, um, with that, um, do you, what are y'all's goals other than like just rolling for practice and you doing some, like, are you like drawing up posters or what's your plan yeah. for? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't like introduce myself. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maybe introduce Oh yeah, you can do that. Um, is this something you y'all will be interested in role playing out or are you doing this cover it and kind of like over cost, 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 cost. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, go ahead and do a performance check with advantage for me to just kind of gauge your um, your practice, how you stand, how the other members of the band see you in this moment of performance. I only get plus eight. Twenty-seven. <laughs> That's with advantage too. So charming. Yeah. You want me to roll my nineteen again? In case you get that twenty. Twenty. No. Okay, but still, yeah, 27 um, <clears throat> is uh, like Yvonne specifically, like after all the songs are run through and you cleaning up a lot of the parts that you didn't rehearse very well from uh, the Battle of the Bands itself, um, puts a hand on your shoulder, uh, leans in and says like, dude, we knew we made the, the right choice when we signed you onto the band. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like we weren't missing anything, like we didn't need somebody, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we, Don't get it twisted. Uh, <laughs> we could keep you out and <laughs> But you're a great addition. <laughs> what you add to the music really elevates our sound, man. Um, and I appreciate what you got. Um, and so, <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna die instantly. <laughs> if you fell into a door that magically disappeared and no. didn't come back. Dude, I don't feel like you're listening to me. If you rolled anything less than a 27. <laughs> <laughs> Out of here. Um, so, um, you feel like really encouraged at that practice and they give you a little more like leadership in the music in the upcoming performance um, that will be at Smash Pods. Um, and so overall, very successful practice. When um, you see Misery, you can see a lot of talent and a lot of elevation from like where he started in their Battle of the Bands to now is like already you can see that he has uh, stepped up a lot as a musician um, and has a lot of talent. And even in the like kind of swooning that you saw some of your party do earlier today, like you don't get to that level, but you can kind of see this hook of like, and he's got something that has power over people. And even when he's just practicing here in this basement, like that that level that he brings to it is very distracting away from the piles of garbage around you. Just like fade away. 
Um, with that too, um, if you would like to make a, this is very weird, um, like kind of using like art, but right. also your mind of like, how can you create these posters and market them? Um, what are you trying to create? What does this look like for you? I like to think it would be an athletics check because it's like athletics of the hand, you know, no. the draw. <laughs> That's certainly not. That's okay. We all like to think that. <laughs> I agree. Okay, how many people are in the band home? Um, four. Uh, yeah, four. Okay, so working on they don't need sketches, we'll see how they turn out. But the sketch idea is there's um, like a volcano erupting mm -hmm. in the background, oh, right? Yeah and right so well, cool or so bad so cool <laughs> there's um kind of a dragon flying over the horizon of course in the background and all the members um are more the three members are like more in the foreground like surrounded by flames but like clearly playing their instruments like very intently and then misery is more in the forefront mm -hmm. uh playing his lute on a pile of crab corpses yes um that are also on fire oh my Isn't goodness this already burial artwork on a king of the bay itself <laughs> sponsor um no no it's fantastic okay um not... misery looks yeah. very handsome yeah like it's just a picture mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> oh. Um, okay i don't feel like this really is a good skill to tie this to, but what I'll have you do is just roll two uh, d20s with it, like so, a roll with advantage, um, and um, like anything above a twelve is like great, um, but anything above a fifteen is going to be like near perfect of like exactly what you're intending here. Adding anything to it? No, since I, I don't really feel like I can tie it to a skill, but right. And we have it like discussed. Yeah, well, really better than that, so, I was curious. Yeah, no, five, misery. So. Um, misery, a couple of times, even though you're really locked into... I painted it with gold. <laughs> um, even though you're really locked into practice and uh, staying focused on the music and being tuned to the band, a couple of times you look over at Gwen, who uh, occasionally, occasionally looks up at the band, but is very fixated on a couple pieces of parchment that she rolls out and pulls a different, like, ink set and... Um, starts to color out these posters, and then by the time y'all are done, um, she pulls them out and displays to the band these five posters that she's drawn out uh, with the name of the band uh, and what she described earlier. Um, and how, what, how do you intend to use the, the posters? Am I telling this to them? Yeah, to, you. to the band. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just thought, you know, draw up some quick sketches to get your name out there a little bit more, get the word out. You're build an audience, build a following at Smash Pods, so let's, you know, get these posters throughout town. Get more people at Smash Pods. Dude, our music inspired you <laughs> to create this art. Yes. <laughs> this must come from deep within your soul. I, I think so. You need to come to every practice <laughs> so you can make this again. We discussed that. Okay. So you're like a manager now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like your, yeah, I'm like your PR person. Yeah. Marketing. Does anyone in the band seem to be upset that Misery's like friends that are? No, no, no. Uh, Misery's the pavements of this um, band. Even <laughs> Um, Yvonne is like <laughs> so enamored by the work that you did and, and no one is like caring at all about what's actually like <laughs> that is focused on misery because they think that this is one of the coolest things that's ever happened. Um, uh, I'll say you'll, you'll even hear just you and in some of the uh, sub conversation that's happening about this. At one point Yvonne says, see I told you bringing some money into this group would be helpful. Um, but... <laughs> You don't hear that, <laughs> and um, I hear it. You hear it. Oh, um, but also um, that a full band is like so excited. They give you some dates on like when the next shows are and everything too, um, and you're able to set that up. Um, Y'all got a good sound. Yeah, I know. I mean, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Like, yeah. My notes say rolled a nat twenty, so it looks hella sick. <laughs> <laughs> good notes. Great. Um, so, uh, you have those five posters you can do with them as you wish. 
Um, the practice was wildly successful in Missouri, and you feel like you're um, kind of like putting your best self forward into this band, um, and very much you've got some great money coming your way, um, so you're self-sufficient. Seven gold is quite a lot. That you is. can live off of that for a long time. I am a musician. Yes. Professionally. <laughs> Yes. You don't need your parents anymore. <laughs> I never did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, five posters, you can add your inventory and use them as you wish. Um, and uh, that's it for the practice. Um, we're, and now we're going to head to the magic shop, right? I haven't been doing anything. Correct. I was going to go visit Grungeon. Okay, great. Yeah. Just uh, check on him. Yeah. See how he's doing. Uh, in the middle of the afternoon, uh, heading into Grungeon's place, um, you see him standing in the kitchen. Uh, he's rolling out some dough. Uh, and, uh... Is he making a... <laughs> no. He's <is. laughs> oh, oh making God, several loaves of bread. Uh, and so, um, he has got um, some salt that he's rolling into a couple different stacks of, um, the, the dough that he's setting up and sorting. Um, and he has already set a, a, a couple off to the side over by the fire, which is starting to puff up. Um, and he's just working on, like, a week's worth of bread, um, at this point. And he hears the door and... Uh, looks a little like taken back for a moment, and you can see him looking at you for a long pause before. Yes. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back home. It's been it's been a couple of days since you've been here. Yes. Um. Some <laughs> quite a turn of events happened since I last saw you with the with the cake. Yeah. You yeah. Yes. And you look over and there's now an empty plate of bread on the cake. Oh, good. You enjoyed it. Oh, it was so good. Thank I'm you. So Thank glad. you very much. Aside, Sally personally got concerned that he was not going to eat any more of that cake than that one bite that he took. <laughs> so I'm glad to see. Um, yeah, I, uh, the group that I ended up joining for the Bronze Bowl thing. We have continued to work together, I suppose, um, doing various tasks. Uh, the the cat man, <laughs> I don't remember what his name is, <laughs> uh, get, put us up at the Elisa Regional for several nights. So that's that's where I've been. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Do you know I the cat <laughs> um, <coughs> Are you... Uh, uh, evening Breeze runs the Elisa Regional? Are you talking about the, the, the evening? No, the... Uh, he's in charge! <laughs> oh, oh, yes. The Grand Proprietor. The Grand Proprietor. Right. That's the right. one. Right. Um, he hasn't been around long in his position. Mm. Uh, don't feel bad, I don't remember his name either. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> Do you guys actually not remember his name? Uh, is that Felix? Is that... Yeah, it's Felix. <laughs> nope, it escapes me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't I, I knew that Populous would be a good idea for you. I'm glad to hear that you are meeting some people. Connected. Yes, um, I, I don't know that I would call it home yet, but um, I'm certainly mm -hmm. making making some connections um, and we've got we've got quite I've met many people in a very short span of time <laughs> a lot I uh, wish I could tell you all of them but one I remember in particular is Rickledar do you know of him oh. he's down by the lake that's a weird one no <laughs> oh that's <laughs> a weird one <laughs> good <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, we also, uh... Do you know our president? <laughs> well, how about Rickle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, we've spent a lot of time with, um, Savarin and Munkin from the Academy. Do you know them? Oh, gosh, no, I'm so, so... Felix! <laughs> His name is Felix. <laughs> That's it. Yes. He's the one. He's paying for us to stay at the Elisa Regional oh, for a few nights. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know... Yeah, you're stuck here. Uh, I hope that... Uh, no. Um, home is very much... And he takes your hands, uh, which is his, like, patches of wet dough stuck to him. Okay. And he just cups your hand into these, like, very sticky, doughy hands. Um, 
he has no idea he's doing that to you and just looks into your eyes. Um, I know that these buildings and these streets are challenging at times, but uh, just surround yourself with, with good people. Uh, home will be found in them, not, not just the city. Thanks, Grinjin. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that there's much else to roleplay right. out there, but I hang out with him. Yeah. Help him make some bread, maybe. And together you all roll out several loaves of this bread and get yeah. ready for um, restocking the storage for, for his food and preparations. For- I'm going to assume no, but the last thing I'm going to ask him is, do I know what he did before he, like, retired? and became an old man. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> do you know what he did? Um, at one point I know I knew what he did. Uh, oh, sure did. I just need to find the document. Um, but what are you wanting to ask or do with this? Um, <laughs> if he, I'm assuming a lot of people in this town worked near the lake because mm-hmm. it, it's the lake, it's very large. Uh, I so I was now. gonna see if he had heard of anything about a magic door by the lake oh. or the Chulofs mm-hmm. or anything in general. Okay. Any of the many things we've okay. come across in this lake. I was yeah. actually able to find Grunin's document very quickly. Yes! Um, so he um, primarily was a farmer for his entire life. And so a lot of um, bent over back work um, that oh. is, um, is the primary reason why he's um, struggling in his later life. Um, but um, with that, he spent a lot of time near the lake, for that matter, because of that uh, matter of work and where it is done. Um, however, um, in uh, asking about this door and everything, like, yeah, he's very interested in it, and he like listens to and talks with you about the potential of the door and all of that. But mm-hmm. he doesn't. He's not able to offer any picture. Does he have any? Does he know anything about the Chula? Um, specifically, what? Just like. Has he heard of them before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does um, he know about them? Yeah, he'll tell you some stories of like drills that they ran of like running in and hiding um, and being able to quickly get away from the lake whenever that like uh, they would have some type of like supervisor who would spend some time um, just walking the docks near the lake and then if they ever saw them um, and knew that any any interactions might be coming uh, that they would blow a horn and all the docks workers and the farmers would run in for a bit and then hunker down and just wait out for a like, good call to go and then they could turn. Does he remember the first time this happened? About-ish? Yeah, um, it, it, always since the beginning of his like training and upbringing. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, um, though he would say it got more and more frequent as time got on. Okay. Very helpful. Thanks, Grenjin. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, I think we have time to uh, slip in this meeting first. What, time, what actual time is it? 7.46. What time do we actually end? 10? Do we end at 10? Ooh, yeah. Ten. Okay, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do the meeting and then we'll call this episode. Um, so, um, who is attending the meeting at the Brass Star? One, two, three. Julie Pogram and Orla. You don't want to come? Okay. I'm probably going to go check on the status of the cabin. Just to go see. Sure. Sir, so okay. I, did not. I know, he said it really aggressively. Yeah. I think I he's so mad at me. And he's like making me like sculpt like a bust of him. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, as you all, as you three meet up, let's, I will assume at the Elisa Regional, like in the common space, uh, as just a place that you all um, frequent and are able to meet up at. Uh, is there anything that you three want to talk about before heading over to this meeting? I want to tell them what Grinjin told me about the, sure. the Chula. Okay. So I, uh, while everyone was doing their various tasks, um, I went and visited um, Grinjin to see how he was doing, check in on him, and... Um, I asked him about his time as a farmer because he, the the farmlands are are near the um, are near the lake, and to see if he knew anything about the door or about the chulaf or anything like that. Um, he didn't know anything about the door, but he did say, and this was surprising to me, that as he as long as he could remember being a farmer, they like ran drills when the chulaf were going to come up on the land and we're posing a threat. It seemed to me when this first started that it seemed like the Chulaf were recent threats. 
but Grenjin is very um, experienced. <laughs> he's a much older man, <laughs> and he's retired now, and so to know that he didn't remember a time before running these drills makes me think there's much more to know about these Tuloff and how long they've been here. He did say that they came up on the shore more as time went on, um, but I just thought that might inform our conversation since we know that it's related to the stone. Interesting. So it will seem that the uh, the Chulof perhaps have, have uh, naturally grown in numbers, but not necessarily, uh, and not necessarily a, a foreign presence in this land. Mm-hmm. Perhaps a staple of it in mm-hmm. a weird way. Mm-hmm. Be interesting to see what the connection with the stone is and why it wants to go back now. Indeed, it could very well be that the two are entirely disconnected, but mm-hmm. perhaps uh, we can learn more in this meeting. Let's do it. Me, Let's me, go. Me. Hip, hip. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, for sure. Uh, so good. Uh, okay, so the three of you, Ogrim, Laurelith, and Tuli, uh, meet up. Uh, I will say, in that conversation and looking at Tuli, uh, Tuli's like coming down with a little bit of stress and focus, and like you've got a little bit of just like uh, adjustment to make of like socializing again from you just being like nose deep in your books. Um, and so you, y'all can recognize that like Tuli's just got a little bit of that stress on her back. So it's starting to melt away and everything, but. Um, It's just something that's very readily apparent. Um, And then you all meet up, and as you all are leaving the Elisa Regional at this point, um, it has started um, kind of sprinkling into a light rain into the evening. Uh, And so you all are dodging through like awning to awning to get across town and get over to um, the Breath Star. Um, But... The distant cry. That was so loud. Did you have something to share? Felix. <laughs> Felix is so mad that we forgot his name. Felix. No, I highly doubt it's pick, picked up on the microphone. Yeah. However, we <laughs> now it's a whole thing. Yes, now it's a whole thing. Um, we have two cats. Um, okay, so uh, heading through the rain over to the east side of town. Um, where the Brass Star is located, you get to the uh, multiple story building in the spacious side where different shops or residences are all um, spaciously divided within each other. Uh, and uh, you find the familiar iron rod that sticks out with a massive brass star hanging from it. So you find the building that you all went to earlier today. And underneath of that rod, um, is a is a man in a long leather trench coat, um, and the trench coat has a hood pulled up over it too, a, a black beard that comes down to a point, and when you all round the corner and get within the vicinity, peeks up, um, and you can see underneath of the shadow and the night of dark, um, a little bit of a, a light-skinned face from that. Um, arms extend, he reaches in and pulls out a long white wooden wand, waves it over towards the door, and you can hear the of the door unlocking. Come on in, I've been expecting. And then stows the wand away. So we have an effort. He wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why we came back. Okay. After Martha yeah, flirted yeah, yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, that's kind of after that whole display. Or between the two, and I'm like, you feel good about this? I have my dagger ready. Wonderful. And yeah, so okay, you walk in. Always. I thought the woman always has her arm fully inside of her dagger. No, that wouldn't be very sneaky at all. <laughs> Tuli had already started for the door. <laughs> <laughs> like turn around when he said something. Uh, heading into the actual building, uh, you see the familiar shop set up with the shelves of the minor implements to magic casting all towards the front. Um, and then behind the larger implements, the swords, the shields, the robes, um, things like that all on display. But um, this man you uh, assume to be Ferragrant um, now uh, pulls his wand out again, and it is a like almost bone white piece of wood uh, that is uh, gnarled out with a couple different knots to it uh, that he waves over himself, uh, immediately dispelling all of the water uh, off of him, and he immediately becomes dry. Uh, turns over to see you all entering, and then pulls his hood down, 
And you can see long black hair pulled up into a big bun that's massive and huge onto the back side of his head. Um, and then this leather trench coat that goes all the way down the rest of his body. Uh, he waves his wand over the three of you all as you enter. And the soaked wetness that you have from going out into the rain is immediately dispelled. Uh, and then he sends the wand forward into a large gyrating circle. And this is the most interesting piece of all of this magic that he's doing. Uh, the entire appearance of the shop folds away almost like it turned into a cloth. That as he spins the wand around, the, the full picture of this shop bends and twists down into a little piece that he then tucks into a pocket. And the room now appears to be a semicircle of eight red overstuffed chairs around a massive hearth and fire. Uh, three teapots circle around and fill little cups next to all of these cups as he smiles and turns. I'm so sorry for all of this uh, performance say, but like, um, welcome, uh, be warm and dry. Uh, Martha tells me so much of the power that you all also hold. So I imagine that this is all trivial to you as well. And then he goes and sits to the middlemost seat um, to everything that he just performed. Sits down and smiles, leaning back. Well, go on, take a seat. Let's, let's have a conversation. <laughs> uh, I guess I just kind of want to do like a, a vibe check. Just kind of look around the room and just kind of figure out like, <laughs> like how, how well meaning is he actually? Is it just some kind of performative? Does yeah. it you know, for sure. party? Is it more black type there? Well, yeah. I also wanted to do the same thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's 10 plus 7, 17. Okay, I want to do a dead one. <laughs> what is it? 19. Nice! We're pursuing the hack Yeah. It's right. a place! I don't think I have any. Tui would be more interested in the spell. Sure, yeah. It's 19. Okay. You can make an arcana. 20. Okay, so you have 20 and yours is 17. 17, okay. Um, equal for both of you um, at this tier. Um, his demeanor in all of this, um, he's, n I'll say first, he's not trying to uh, impress or outperform in any way. Uh, he is. Um, honest in his humility of sorry for the performance. Like that part was like true to um, what you immediately take of never knowing this guy before uh, and reading his tone, his voice and the way that he is proceeding in this um, seems genuinely like I'm not trying to do this big puffy, I'm so powerful display. Uh, you get this sense that like um, he was not in this building yet, is trying to prepare it, get it ready, make you all comfortable, uh, that these are his priorities. Like, I am very interested in meeting you, and so in that, I want to do all that I can to make this a space that you feel good and comfortable. Tuli, you wanted to roll an arcana check of just like, what is going on with this magic? And are you trying to figure out like what spells did he just cast, or just like get a read on him as a spellcaster? Um, maybe, both, but probably more of the spells. Okay. Because Tuli is like constantly trying to learn and is sure. fascinated by mm -hmm. um, Yeah, it was a nine. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. <laughs> you, you're just like baffled at the level of his ability to change reality. Um, in that he, the, the, of course, the most impressive thing that he just did was turn a shop that you all physically walked through in three dimensions, was able to like peruse the shelves and walk about. He was able to just take that bit of reality and change it to be a completely different one in a way that just flipped this space. Um, amazing. And so in that, you were just like, you don't even understand the level of magic or power that it would take to do that. Uh, and that kind of stops you from like breaking down the little pieces of how did he do this. It was just like, I can't believe somebody can do this. Um, I, I just kind of want to take a look at the chairs and I'm going to say eight chairs. This seems like a very specific number. <laughs> you can have them. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what are you doing then, Joey? <laughs> 
we're exchanging number of chairs. <laughs> <laughs> like it seems like a lot of, if he's putting it up into thin air, eight chairs seems like a lot and a very specific yeah, number. Specifically arranged very specific. <laughs> For five of us to be there, yeah. four of us. Uh, he's like, I don't know if Mark oh, is there uh, or not. sure. Uh, and he stands up from his chair, walks over towards the fire. Come with me. Come stand over here. Do you? <laughs> do you walk over towards him? Hesitantly, yes. Okay. Uh, stand right here and look right at that point on that portrait over there. And then on this portrait that you can see uh, a very intricately designed tree with several rings and different levels that you can also see has different images for all the different um, schools of magic uh, on it too. Uh, but it's, if you stand right here and look down this line to this, it's perfectly symmetrical all the way around to just bounce all of this. And it just, it feels just right. Do you see that? Mm. <laughs> mm. I, that's that's it for me. I'm just gonna nod and say, mm. Tuli comes up behind me, <laughs> like looking at us, like, whoa. <laughs> you get it, though. Like, he's, yeah, great. This is awesome. Cool. All right. I I take it you are Ferragrand. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I am uh, Ferragrand Star. This is I like my establishment here. Martha tells me that. Uh, you all bring great pr- power here tonight. Uh, we are not entirely sure what exactly it is that we bring. I I will just say okay. that what we have brought means ill will to the people of this town and to those that dare defy it. His eyes go very wide for a moment, as if this is the first time he's heard that information. Um, I, uh, <laughs> and then he pulls out a little piece of paper from the book that Martha wrote in <laughs> I thought you all were trying to sell something? <laughs> uh, the says you were trying to sell us something of powerful magic. Is that? Mm. Well done. Yeah. Let us start fresh then. You bring uh, an artifact, uh, an object of, of its own personality. This this is true, and we could certainly. This night could end with us selling it to you, though I highly doubt that. And <laughs> considering uh, what I have in my pocket, tell me, what do you know of husk stones? His face goes to deep, pensive nature. That is a word. Not heard in a very long time. And that's where we can end this episode. <gasps> Are you serious? You said we were going to get you to do the whole meeting. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I know. I think it's going to be a But if you wait about five minutes, we'll continue to listen. <laughs> you have to wait a whole week. Oh. Hey. Oh.